Alright everybody, welcome back to Bee Mother Reviews. Now I have made it back safely from lovely Japan where I attended Wonder Festival 2018. So hopefully you've had a chance to check out some of the content that I've been putting out for that. So i got some videos on the channel, so check those out. We have a few more to come yet, so those will trickle out over the next uh, few days or weeks. Uh, but right now it's time for another review. And today we've got from HMO, this is Ren. This is the debut piece from their original, um, it's really it's an original world they've developed. So it's called Bounties of Bathos. She's the debut character from that statue line. Um, really nice piece. Um, it was originally supposed to come out in uh, just before Christmas last year, but a few of them trickled out, but they put a halt to it. They weren't happy with some of the paintwork and, and revised it. And now it's here, I've got the official release Ren, let's get into the review. Okay, we're going to jump right into talking about the sculpt and design on this statue. Now, this character and the statue itself was designed by co founder of HMO, Mufizal. Uh, it was sculpted by Mufizal and it was co collaborated with um, Danny Hines, who's kind of a, a well known collector around uh, you know social media and stuff. So. They got together and created this Bathos world, and out of their minds popped Ren. She is um, sort of a hero from the world, uh, one of the main characters. She is described as the Savage Wasteland Sniper, and I think you can obviously see that. She's got the giant sniper rifle in her hand. Um, she's sort of half human, half robot. She's like a cyborg. Um, probably almost more robot than human when you take a look at it. She's got um, fully robotic legs here. Uh, but what I like about the legs is, you know, even though they're very robotic here, you can see all the all the details here. It's still very feminine, right? Like they've sort of got the high heel look to them on the feet, and they're still shapely. And she's still got that female figure, uh, so they made sure to keep that. Um, those robot builders of Bathos know what they're doing, of course. Um, and you know, probably my favorite part of her whole figure is the arm. Um, tons of detail here. You got you know pipes and conduits and pistons and all kinds of stuff happening there. You've got the re the screen readout on her forearm. Um, really, really cool design. I mean, there's just so much going on there. I can't imagine having to had put that together and paint it and all the little, tiny little details. I mean, they did a really great job on that arm uh, and she's got her um, eyepiece attached to the side of her face and this piece here uh, links to her the scope of her gun and so she can sort of see um, you know information from from the gun goes to her eyepiece and vice versa so I mean they've really thought out everything about this statue I mean I, I was talking to Mufas all uh, about a little bit about the gun and just asking him, you know, what are these canisters on the side? Is that the sort of the bipod, like that, you know, the stand she can stabilize her gun? He's like, no, no, those are those are the gas canisters, and they have these rods inside, and they power up the gun, and and there's four of them, and that's maximum um, leveled up, right? So, I mean, <laughs> he's got all the details here, and then they gave, they recently just po published a poster all about the gun, and just showed you all the different things on it. Another tiny little detail that's kind of cool is there's a there's a switch here on the side of the gun and she can flip it from from kill uh, to kiss. So the uh, I think it's currently set to kill. So she's got the kill switch on. Uh, you don't want to mess with her at the moment. So very very cool design. Um, you know she's got the cape and everything, the flowing cape. Uh, I, I it's just so original and that's one of the things I really um, appreciated about doing this review when I was sitting down to get ready to do it and I thought man it's so refreshing to do something that's never been seen before I can just look at it and appreciate it for what it is you don't have to worry about you know did she wear this outfit in the comics or are these colors matching the game or does her face look like the actress from the movie and I don't have to worry about any of that I can just look at all the details and you know we can move down to the base and see even more details and I, I really love this base it might look kind of simple um, off the top but when you look at it 
Well, there's this bot on the ground that she's just sort of shot down is kind of the scene that they're presenting here. And you can see, you know, the trail of in the sand where it slid through the sand and then the, the sand is kind of pushed up in the front where it's come to a stop. And then they got these damaged panels on the side of the bot that are just kind of hanging out. And you can look inside and see all the robotic details. I mean, they've just given so much thought to everything on this statue. So design and sculpt wise, it's really, it's really a work of art. They did a great job. Alright, so before we jump into uh, talking about the paint on this statue, I'm just going to point out, of course, I've changed out the portrait. This is sort of her battle uh, helmet uh, option, and I, I actually think I like this one the best. There is a third one I'll show you in a little bit, but uh, I think this one here is my favorite. Uh, but anyways, the paint. The, so the paint scheme on this statue is designed by James TCE. So he's a very talented guy. He does uh, some of the most amazing paint work, I think, uh, in the whole industry, uh, he's just, just always sort of pushing the boundaries of what can be done. Um, so, and I was talking with Danny last year at uh, Singapore Comic Con, and, and he basically said, you know, we just tell James, you know, we want it to be green or whatever color, and, and they just, you know, leave it almost entirely up to him. So, he came up with a really neat paint scheme for this statue. You got little um, accents of orange and some teal in there and sort of this sort of it's kind of a sandy color to most of her armor which makes sense because she's a, a desert uh, inhabitant so she's got a blend in um, so one of the things that I was kind of most uh, concerned about with this statue is as I said James is such a such a good painter you know how are they going to uh, replicate that at the factory level and I, I think they did a really nice job um, it's a very complex paint job, I believe. Uh, I think I've read somewhere that they they use like over a hundred different colors and on the statue, like layering and things. So, um, but overall, the paint job came out really clean. I think uh, you know the armor looks very uh, windswept. Um, you know, she as I said, she's a desert. Um, she lives in the desert, so it looks like she's been blasted with sand for years because a little bit of wear kind of all over. Uh, same thing with this bot. I mean, it's sort of discolored and, and looks sort of worn and, and sand blasted again. Very nice paint job on the bot. They made a nice use of like uh, stencils and things to uh, do the lettering on there and, the, and on her uh, the readout screen on her forearm. A uh, nice sort of um, hexagonal pattern here on on the front of her mask and parts of her suit. So the paint job turned out really good. I think uh, they did a nice job of you know replicating James's uh, original design. Uh, so really no worries there. The one thing that I would maybe change if it were me is her veins on her arms and her neck. Uh, they're just a little bit too strong. They stand out a little bit too much. I might have uh, knocked those down a little bit, but uh, really, I mean, nothing to complain about. As I said, it's a really nice clean paint job from HMO on this statue. All right, so production and build quality on this statue. Uh, we'll start off with the assembly guide here. Uh, there's also a little uh, a little comic in, in the front. Uh, this is just kind of a quick little adventure for Ren to give you a little bit of insight into her character. Uh, it actually kind of paints the story of her shooting down the spot, so that's kind of neat. Uh, but in the back of this there is step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to set this up, so you may want to check that out. But I will note that there is uh, a couple small errors or omissions from that. Uh, first of all, uh, this pack on the side of her leg is shown in the book as being a separate piece, but in fact it is permanently attached. So uh, let's go ahead and start assembling the statue. There is a particular order that you're going to want to do it. Uh, you're going to want to put the arms in first. Uh, so they just fit in with a magnet. Um, before I go any further, Ren slots into the base. There's a peg under her right foot and the bot, these two panels and this little uh, antenna thing at the back. Are separate pieces. I didn't want to take them out because they're kind of tiny holes uh, to, to slot into. I didn't want to waste time. So uh, anyways, we'll back to Ren herself. So you're going to want to put the arms in uh, and they just fit in nice and easy with magnets. And then you're going to want to do the cape. 
and it just kind of slots over the neck piece there like so and then the pack on the back of her um, right at the you know small of her back there that attaches in with a magnet so you can slide that in like that and oh the, the other thing that's not shown in the booklet is that you get these two tiny teeny tiny little rods uh, one of them's metal and one of them is resin and they just you can pick which one you like the best and there's a tiny hole on the over her shoulder here and you just sort of slot that in right there so don't forget the little rods on her backpack okay and then you're going to want to do the gun and you can see it just fits in with a magnet into the right arm and then just kind of is going to sit up against her left arm she's going to be cradling it in her palm so you just very carefully slide that in into place like that so you just want to make sure that you know watch the gas canisters they're fairly fragile you don't want to knock one of those off uh, so just make sure you get the gun right into her palm and all the way seated into the wrist of the right arm so lastly you've got your choice of three portraits you saw the unmasked with the eyepiece already the helmet portrait and then this one here is called the auto face and the auto face is a, it's a consumable item from Athos and it, it helps um, you know disguise the person wearing it. And once it runs out of power, then it's got to be thrown away. It's no good anymore. So just another little thing that they've developed for this world. Um, and you just pop that in. It fits in with a magnet there. So this face is it's kind of interesting. I really like the red hair. I like how it contrasts with sort of the I don't want to say bland colors, but the subdued colors of her armor, the sandy color, it really pops against those colors there. Um, it's kind of an interesting look. I believe this one was sculpted by uh, somebody else. It might have been uh, Tiago or someone like that. The one, I do like it. Uh, I think the neck's maybe a little bit long, so I probably won't go with this, but I do really like the red hair. So um, it looks pretty good uh, on the body. Um, but anyways, the statue goes together nice and easy. I like that it's kind of more of a compact base. Uh, it's it not going to take up a ton of your display space, which is nice these days because, as you can see, I am running out. Um, the base is really heavy. It's, it's actually really heavy for its size. Um, so it's a, gut, a good, nice quality, hefty feel to it, this statue. Um, some of the parts are fairly fragile, but they do pack it up nicely. A lot of extra little foam bits are, you know, stuffed into places to, to keep it nice and protected safely while it travels to your home. Uh, so good quality piece. Uh, you do get this art print. Uh, this is by Ario Anandito. He's a exceptional artist from Indonesia. I had a chance to meet him last year. Uh, great guy. Um, a very talented artist as you can see does a lot of work for Marvel as well but this is a really great print really sharp looking print and it's kind of an oversized print normally you get something a bit smaller but this one's nice and big so you can display this one with with pride um, so overall a uh, very nice quality piece the packaging as I said is good it's um, if you know the XM style with the you know the lift off top and the velcro straps that's what you're getting with this piece uh, so, you know, not to worry too much about shipping damage, although, as I said, some of the pieces are delicate, so be careful unpacking it. Um, but otherwise, really nice quality piece. You saw how easy it went together, uh, so no problems there. Um, I really like it. Good quality piece from HMO. All right, let's wrap up this review. Uh, Bounties of Bathos Wren from HMO. It really turned out great. And I gotta say, it's really kind of inspiring to see this collection of artists just, you know, pour their heart and soul into developing this world. I mean, it must have taken countless hours to, to come up with these characters and their history and the planet, history of all the planets and the world building that they've done. Uh, they just launched the website, bountiesofbathos.com, with a little dash in between each word so you can go there read up on all these characters there's more to come in the line I actually got to see 
a whole bunch of them last year at the Singapore Comic Con. I did a booth tour video, so you can go check that out. Uh, next up, I believe, is Crow King, which is my favorite. This guy in this huge, like, exoskeleton suit. Uh, then they got Necrosis, uh, who's kind of like a samurai, uh, robotic samurai kind of dude. And then Sorrow, who's this sort of aquatic hunter who looked really, really cool. So just really unique, original characters. Um, so uh, all I have tons of respect for the whole team that's come up with these designs. Uh, Mufizal, Danny, uh, James, Sofara, the whole X HMO team. Just done a fabulous job here. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. This is Ren from HMO. She turned out really, really nice. Uh, more to come this year. I've got a whole bunch of stuff coming up right away. Uh, so check those out and stay tuned. We'll talk to you guys later. Yeah.